Now tonight, New Zealand devastated by climate change. That is what a recent report says. Labour are celebrating 100 years and they want to build 100,000 affordable homes. And in Wellington, it is Gay Pride Week. Yoo-hoo. Let's party. I'm Wallace Chapman. I'm Hayley Holt. Welcome to the one and only pub politics show, Backbenchers. Let's rock and roll. Tonight, uh, fantastic. Welcome, welcome to Back Bench. Gosh, we're halfway through the season already. It's episode 10 tonight, so uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a shocker outside. So, thank you so much for being in the pub and thank you for watching at home. Uh, and big topics tonight, like climate change and, uh, and the homosexual law reform, celebrating that tonight. Um, but look, a big round of applause for uh, United Future Leader Peter Dunn. Thank you. How are you, Peter? I'm well, thanks, Wallace. Good to have you? you on the show. Nice to be back. Hey, there's a bit of a story about your bow tie. Oh, yes, there is. This is a tie made specially for me by a Wellington company called As Is The Manor, a little company here in Wellington doing a great job, and this is called The Dunn. The Dunn. So I'm, I'm, I'm honouring them by wearing it tonight. <laughs> All right, very, very good. Local, bu- small local business. Yep. Yeah. But and apparently they've run out of bow ties. Well, they, they produced this a little while ago, a few weeks ago, and we put it out on Facebook and Twitter. And the response was they've had a demand for all of their products, which I think they're struggling to meet. Who would have thought there's so many United uh, United Future supporters? Well, you'd be amazed. amazed. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. Hey, now, we we, we asked for the mailbag. We opened the mailbag this afternoon. So I've got a a question here for Peter. Haven't seen it yet. So here we go. This is for Peter Dunn from Amy12. Oh, school holiday. Lovely. What's your Pokemon avatar? (laughs) <laughs> well, that's a very good question. I haven't actually got into Pokemon, to be perfectly honest, although I've had lots of tweets about it because people have spotted me out walking around the Wellington waterfront and assuming I'm chasing <laughs> these sorts of things. But no, I'm, I haven't got one. Oh, you haven't got one? No, All right. I'm sorry. What's your middle name? Uh, well, it depends. I've got about three of them. Fra- Francis is the Francis, one. Francis, and what's the pet you once had? Well, I've had cats. Okay, what were the names? Oh, there's a succession of them. The most recent one was called Tammy. Francis Tammy. That's your Pokemon okay. uh, avatar. Jolly very, good. very good. That'll uh, do. And there's actually, you've got two questions here. Question two is uh, Lani17 from Brighton. Uh, did you vote for the homosexual law reform uh, 30 yes, years I did. ago? Very proudly. Very happy to have voted not only for the, for the part that decriminalised homosexual activity, but also the part that removed the human rights discrimination. That was the bit that failed, but I was one of the few to vote for that as well. All right, we'll, t- we'll talk about that later on, eh? Uh, look, a big uh, round of applause for Labour MP, Lewis Wall. Kia ora. Hey, kia ora. Good to have you on the show. It's lovely to be here, Wallace. On this uh, very, very uh, auspicious uh, panel uh, tonight. <laughs> okay, here we go. Zara, oh, Zara, age nine, asks Lewis, hi, Louise, do you ever get sick of your job? Oh, no, I don't. Surprisingly enough, we're in recess and I'm back in Wellington. <laughs> so I obviously love my job so much. All right, very, very good. That's the answer, Zara. <laughs> hey, thanks for being on the show. Uh, and uh, look, a big round of applause for National MP Chris Bishop. Chris, <laughs> how you doing? Hi, how are You've you? just opened your office in Wainui Mata. Second office, yes. Second office. First office in Wainui. First National Party office in Wainui Mata ever. Really? That's right. And you're celebrating, you've got two figures on the wall. Who are they? Uh, so uh, when we inherited the office, uh, Bob Marley was up on the wall, done by a local artist. We're still trying to figure out who it was. Uh, so, but he's up there, and Prince Tui Teka from Party of Maori Club as well. So when you walk into Chris Bishop's office, you've got Bob Marley and Tui Teka. Yep, and soon you will have the winning entry in the Muriel Hopper uh, Art Awards, which is the local Hutt Valley Art Awards. I bought the, uh, the sculpture, which is a fantastic little piece. It's right. going to be in there as well. Very good. Okay, here's the, from the mailbag. Oh, this from... This is from George, who lives in a retirement home. He's a National Party fan. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, what makes the John Key-led government so good? <laughs> oh, let's, don't worry that, about that. Don't, a, you don't, you don't that sounds re- like one of the patsies I have to ask yeah, in question Yeah, you don't time. have to answer that. All right. OK, welcome <laughs> to the show. Uh, and look, a big round of applause for Green MP Jan, Jan Logie. <laughs> good to have you on, Jan. How are you? Well, maybe you can answer that. What makes the John Key lead government so good? I certainly can't answer that. All right. That. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, this is, this is from Bergen. He's a recent arrival from Germany. My oh. question to the Green Party member, is it too late for climate change? Should we uh, just not worry, party up, snort coke and have sex? 
<laughs> when you I've put got a, an obvious response to that. When you put it like I'll, that. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> um, of course it's not too late. You can't live without hope. Right. And we have to act in consistently with our hope. All right. Very, very good. Okay. Hey, uh, big round of applause for Hayley Holt. Hello. Who is back. Hello. Hey, hey, Hello. Hey, hey, you're back. You're back. You're back. Four weeks in Europe. Uh, I can tell you I, I really missed this place, but I, oh, I, loved, I loved Europe. And I was right in amongst it. I was in London during yeah. Brexit. Yes. Okay. So that would have been a bit of a... <laughs> I was, everyone was freaking Memories. out. I don't think they actually thought, yeah. even the people who voted for it, they didn't think that it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't That's think right. they wanted it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to have you back on. Thanks. Yeah. We've got the top five, I do believe. We sure do, and what a week to come back. It has been upheaval everywhere. Phew! It's been a week of massive change for people at the top. First, Australia's agonising wait to see who will be Prime Minister is over, with Malcolm Turnbull able to eke out a victory. But one has to wonder why anyone wants to be Prime Minister, as Wimbledon champ Andy Murray points out. You know, I think playing in a Wimbledon final is tough, but I certainly wouldn't like to be the Prime Minister. It's an impossible job, so... Rightly so. Much. While Britain's David Cameron seems thrilled to ditch his pop school stand... <laughs> Theresa May will take the new top spot, quickly cementing her role as one of the world's most powerful women. And in other news... Meanwhile, the wheels of justice have caught up to a Whanganui driver who ploughed into a group of protesters very, very slowly. MP Chester Burrows charged with careless driving after running over or gently massaging, depending on who you ask, the foot of a TPP protester. And in other news. Protesters in the US have had more than foot massages, with Black Lives Matter's protesters being served tea and biscuits. Oh wait, no, they were arrested and tear gassed for daring to say that cops shouldn't be unfairly targeting black people. Oh, and killing them. But just got real when Republican and Trump's rumoured VP pick, Newt Gingrich, said this. If you are a normal white American, the truth is you don't understand being black in America. And in other news... Pokemon Go has swept the nation with Kiwis hitting the streets in droves, hunting Pokemon. Even the Prime Minister isn't immune to the craze. And in other news... Poor Andrew, but that didn't stop Labour from celebrating their 100th birthday. National's Jonathan Coleman made sure to send his best wishes. Answer. I'd just like to congratulate the Labour Party on its 100 years, and in particular Mrs King, who seems to have been here for much of it. Oh, no. Un unfair, mean-spirited. Mean-spirited. No